Safety first. <laughs> okay, it's <ciao. laughs> So this week there's lots going on. Uh, Boris is receiving the Cross of Merit, one of Germany's biggest awards, um, the recognition. Bundesverdienstkreuz. And um, we have a, quite a few partner uh, meetings. We have a kids event on Saturday, also at the Maritime Museum. That's going to be nice with Boris and Birte presenting. And we are also preparing the next week uh, where we are going to go to Monaco, which is another Malizia kind of team base, mm -hmm. uh, where we are also going to do a kids event, this time in French, and um, probably also meet our team founder Pierre and uh, our partners from the Yacht Club. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be the Monaco Ocean Week. The Monaco is, Ocean Week, which is you. yeah a big scientific event um, with lots of workshops and um, scientists coming together, so that's quite cool. But that's next week. Uh, so this yes. week we already have a few things. You're also, going to, you're also going to Glashütte. Yeah. That's going to be super cool. Let's go over the factory. Yeah, Glashütte is um, a partner and a watchmaker. And they have this super cool, very detailed manufactory in a tiny town in east of Germany. And um, you're going to go there and get some content and have bar like visit the whole place. So that's going to be quite cool. Yeah. And now we are at the office. And as always, Lucia is unpacking parcels. <laughs> packing and unpacking. Guten Morgen. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good morning. So this is our office at Venusberg in um, Hamburg and um, yeah, we have Kerstin and Lucia always, uh, like I said, unpacking parcels. So we have a dinner tonight with all the partners and we're giving them a little present. Um, so together with the designer of the boat, we have created these paintings, as beautiful as this, which is the process of the design of uh, Malice Sea Explorer. This is one of the stages, but we have also the very, very beginning stages, like this one here, where we were thinking of how to make it black and white, just circles and Basically, it's all the stage, uh, all the stages, until we came out with the final design of yeah, yeah, it. So I like to see these three together. It looks quite cool, I think. And uh, yeah, we will give it to them tonight as a little present. Um, and as a thank you for all their years to partner together with Malaysia. I feel such an artist with this thing on my hand. Like, okay, where are we going next? To the Maritime Museum, right? The kids' yeah. event it's gonna happen here, so in there, and then on top of there. It's where Helen can do her life link. Um, and the recording, you can do it from behind here. Basically, projecting there. There will be a projector there. And the air tambour is presenting, and the kids here. And then the catering uh, that they will set up, it will be right here. That's another job, <laughs> pretending to be a photographer. <laughs> We are currently doing a kids' event. We're doing it hybrid. Chris is over there with kids in a room, and I'm moderating the online part of the event. All these people have logged in and are following our kids' event, so that's good. So, and it's working quite well. People have super nice questions to ask. Yeah, we are just having a little art workshop where we're speaking about coralries and um, the acidification of the ocean, the heating of the ocean, and now we think about a very healthy, nice coralree. And have a look, we create this, a bit inspired by Henri Matisse. And yeah, have a look what the kids do. We love to inspire kids by the sport of sailing the adventures out there on the ocean. But 
kids also think a lot about things when they create something. And after learning so much and listening, we like to inspire them to think about everything they have learned about some parts of our program and then they create something like this. It's the second event of the day, yeah, we had the kids event in the morning and now we're going to do the collection with Boris. It's a big production, we have a the photographer, we have his team, his assistants, we also have a videographer here. Everybody's going to be busy. So we're here with Olymp to shoot the new capsule collection with Boris and Olymp. And the reason we created the collection is that it is made up of 100% sustainable materials. The real star of the day is obviously Lily. Like she's in the middle of all the shorts. And yeah, look at her, she's just sleeping there. Mein Name ist Christoph Holstein, ich bin in der Behörde für Inneres und Sport verantwortlich als Staatsort für den, ich sage mal, für den letteren Teil, für den Bereich Sport. Meine Damen und Herren, wir ehren Boris Herrmann heute nicht nur, weil er als Hochseesegler den Globus umrundet oder weil er sportlich, nautisch, technisch, logistisch härtesten Herausforderungen standhält und ihnen gerecht wird. Nein, wir ehren Boris Herrmann auch weil sein Handeln über die Suche nach sportlichen Herausforderungen und sportlichem Erfolg weit hinausgeht. Sehr geehrter Herr Staatsrat Holstein, liebe Freunde, liebe Partner, liebe Unterstützer und liebe Birte, ich stehe heute hier vor euch tief gerührt und, ähm, und beeindruckt über diese außergewöhnliche Auszeichnung, die ich aber nur stellvertretend für das gesamte Team Malizia und alle Unterstützer und Unterstützerinnen unserer Kampagne entgegennehme. Unser Sport ist aus meiner Sicht eine einzigartige Plattform, um für Klima- und Ozeanschutz zu werben. Als Team engagieren wir uns in anderen gesellschaftlichen Initiativen wie der UN-Ozeandekade, in der Diskussion um nachhaltige Schifffahrt, hier in Hamburg maßgeblich und natürlich, wie Sie wissen, ganz besonders im Bereich der Meereswissenschaft. Wir hatten es eben schon erwähnt und diese Messdaten, die wir dort sammeln konnten auf den letzten zwei Weltumsegelungen, konnten dazu führen, dass die globale Einschätzung der Kapazität des Ozeans CO2 aufzunehmen, um 10% korrigiert werden konnte oder musste. Und äh, das zeigt, dass das nicht nur heiße Tropfen oder Tropfen auf heiße Steine sind, diese Messdaten, sondern wirklich sehr relevante wissenschaftliche Daten, die wir dort äh, auf diesen Wegen äh, sammeln können. Aber ich muss unbedingt das Team erwähnen. Ähm, dieser Orden ist in ganz besonderem Maße der Verdienst von Teamwork, von gegenseitiger Unterstützung, und von Leidenschaft für die gemeinsame Sache. Also, dieser Orden gilt euch. Ein Segelrennen wird mindestens zur Hälfte an Land gewonnen, wie Sie wissen. Vielen Dank. Die Verlagung des Bundesverdienstkreuzes an Boris Herrmann ist eine Anerkennung seines außergewöhnlichen Beitrags zum Segelsport, zum Umweltschutz und zur Gesellschaft als Ganzes. Seine Leistungen und sein Engagement gehen weit über das hinaus, was man von einem Einzelnen erwarten könnte und setzen Maßstäbe für uns alle. Lassen Sie uns also heute diese bemerkenswerten Menschen feiern, der durch sein Handeln gezeigt hat, 
dass Erfolg nicht nur Segeltrophäen, wie es an Segeltrophäen gemessen wird, sondern auch in dem positiven Einfluss, den wir auf die Welt und um uns herum haben. Herzlichen Glückwunsch uns zum Bundesverdienstkreuz und möge dein Beispiel uns allen inspirieren, in unserer Bestrebung ebenso mutig und selbstlos zu sein. We are driving to Glashütte Original, uh, one of our partners, a watchmaker. I've never been to the factory before. And uh, yeah, we have the partnership now for quite a long time, since 2020. And uh, yeah, I'm keen to meet for the first time the people who work there and to see uh, the process of watchmaking and uh, discover the factory. I'm, uh, I'm tired now because we got so much information, hours and hours of, of learning. Uh, I didn't know anything about watchmaking before and now we have seen the whole process A to Z and it's quite fascinating. Um, and now um, a busy week is not over. We keep going now and we go to Monaco. Bienvenue à Monaco. <laughs> so we are back in Monaco, where our team was founded. Um, we have, yeah, Marie is here, Boris is here, Pierre, our team co-founder, and a good friend of Boris is uh, here as well. And we're in Monaco for Monaco Ocean Week, which is a yearly week of events around science um, and the ocean. And we are participating this year with the kids event we're doing on Friday at the Oceanographic Museum. So we have a few things planned, like technical check if everything like, is set up right for this event, which we are streaming also uh, in a Zoom call. So that's cool. People here in Monaco, but also people online can enjoy the kids' event, which is going to be in French. And Boris is going to be speaking at the event, Pierre as well, and we also have a young scientist coming. And then we have also other meetings with our partners like EFG, who have offices here, with the Prince Albert uh, the Second Foundation as well, who are supporting our kids program. And yeah, that's why we come regularly, not too often, but still regularly to Monaco. And, uh, yeah, definitely a change from the, from the yard in Brittany. Sometimes you work in a boat yard, in a container, on a plastic chair, and uh, sometimes you're in a, in a place like this, organizing a kids' event in a historical museum. Alors, vous connaissez tous le bateau Malitia, oui qui nous représente dans toutes les grandes courses au large. À deux personnes, Pierre Caseraghi, ici présent, vice-président du club, qu'on applaudit très fort. Ouais Et Boris Arman, le skipper du bateau, qu'on applaudit très ouais fort. Quel bateau vous naviguez Optimiste. Ils sont où les optimistes Là, là, c'est le meilleur. Moi, je suis la mascotte. Ah ouais, ouais. Voilà, tu vois, même ils disent. 
C'est fabuleux, non oui. Cette expérience-là de, de vie, est-ce que c'est en boisson Est-ce que ça fait un peu peur non. Ça fait très peur. C'est vrai Peut-être. Parfois, pas tout le temps, mais parfois, oui. Ça, ça fait quand même peur. Parce que tu commences et au bout de quelques semaines, tu te rends compte que je n'ai pas autant avancé et j'ai encore tout le monde à faire. Toute l'Australie, tout le, le, tout le Pacifique, toute l'Amérique. Donc ça, c'est quand même très long parfois. Manger quoi On mange des sachets comme des montagnards, des trucs qu'on rechauffe qui sont déjà cuisinés. Oui, avec de l'eau chaude. Oui. On le remercie très fort. On applaudit. Non, mais hey, il faut que tu In the story with our record and the, the storm, what could we tell that? Um, it's gonna be a bit hard to relate it to acidification. No, 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 it doesn't need to be. We can have like three story points, uh, or several, as many as we want. But I really like, I mean, it's anyway nice to tell the kids about the world record. Yes. And uh, tr the trip, and there's a big storm, and that's why we were so fast. And then also, there's something specific in the data. Yes, and I think what is like the story that is really nice with it, at least what is new for the science is like storms over the ocean is not new, <laughs> but this signal is new. So it shows that even if we study the ocean, we don't have enough data to know basic stuff about the ocean, like the, the way the ocean behaves below a storm, we should know it because it's happening all the time, but we so don't. So what happened for the storm? Okay, if you want, I made the schematics for my colleagues so I can show you. Because it absorbs carbon, but below it's How yellow. How you make Because I'm very skilled in boat. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop. Oh, PowerPoint or Keynote. It you works drew it? Well. Yes. Wow. Oh, you drew it? You didn't cut it? Oh, no. Really? So there are two layers. Usually carbon goes this way, and because we have a storm, carbon goes the other mm -hmm. way. But there was not a lot of sea state where we were sailing. The sea was quite flat. It's because yeah. it's really depending on the region that you crossed. Like this happened over the Medio Atlantic Ridge. The, mm -hmm. the plate where the tectonic plates, they do like this. And so in the middle, you have a mountain, like an ocean mountain. And so the over the ocean mountains, the waters, they go up also. So these deep waters, they are even closer to the surface because of this oceanic mountain. Ah, that's the topographic that's upwelling. the mountain. Ah, that's yes. super interesting and super easy to understand for the kids. So basically, because the storm is round, it acts a bit like a, it sucks somehow. Yes. And it pulls water from the deep up. And what is the surprising thing that you don't understand? Or that you are looking for and you don't have the answer. It's usually that we don't have data in storms, so we don't know how they behave. But there's lots of carbon vessels going back and forth with. But uh, they don't also close in storms. I think the general story is that the data that is being collected on board the boat where yeah. you're sailing and racing. No, and I don't want a general story. No, no, I want no, this no, story. no. I, I'm going to get into that. <laughs> the general story is like you're collecting data, and this is not like one data that helps for like scientists to understand one thing about the ocean. The data is super important because you collect it in conditions that research vessels first either don't go because it's so in the Southern Ocean or because it's in stormy conditions. And you can later explain that, that storm story. And um, with what you measure, scientists can find out so many different things. And from there on, we can then lead into the different stories and the different experiments and the different things you're, for example, working on. And like, if you want to tell in the story, like we raced in the ocean race, we broke a record. I don't know, kids, if, have you heard that uh, about that record? In like 24 hours, we raced this many miles, but so also the scientific going, side, it helped. This story is quite interesting to, to, but to, to understand it a little bit better for me, so I can actually moderate a little bit the conversation around. We have Boris and Pierre and Lea, our young scientists, who's uh, working at the Alpha Vigna Institute for Polar Research, who are going to be our speakers tomorrow at the Oceanographic Museum. And so we're basically briefing yeah, what is to be discussed. And this is absolutely normal, just like us getting ready at the same time that we're being filmed. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So 
our final day in Monaco for the Monaco Ocean Week and this morning we have the kids event my ocean challenge in the museum the ocean and as uh, ocean and no, it's oh a French word you should know this one Marie <laughs> Musée Oceanographique <laughs> the Musée Oceanographique are better in French and uh, Lea is gonna do the presentation with Pierre and Boris so how do you feel Lea ahead of this? a little bit excited a little bit anxious to see what the kids are going to think of what we have prepared <laughs> but well, I hope you're not too boring we have, like, we have a new format because we're going to do experiments and film that and even people online are going to be able to see the experiments that you will conduct with yes, I think two it's volunteers going to be really cool with the volunteers and that we can get the children doing stuff and implicated yeah. I think it's going to be really nice in front of the museum <laughs> because we have arrived yeah, they are, they are time <laughs> Tu peux me dire un peu pour comment on trouve les numéros de course de nos bateaux Parce qu'on en a eu plusieurs des bateaux, ils ont eu des différents numéros et celui-là, il a un numéro en particulier. Est-ce que vous arrivez à voir les enfants le, le numéro du, du bateau Est-ce que vous savez ce que représente ce, ce numéro, cette date Donc c'est 1297. Est-ce que vous avez déjà entendu parler de cette date Est-ce que vous connaissez Malizia Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé en 1297 Exactement, c'est la prise du rocher par Malitia. On est sur de l'acide presque pur. Voilà, en plus, je ne sais pas si vous pouvez entendre, mais vous, vous avez pu entendre, ça fait plein de bruit, ça mousse. En fait, c'est ça, c'est la craie, elle se dissout, l'acide, il dissout la craie. Donc dans l'océan, c'est aussi un petit peu ce qui se passe. Si les océans deviennent plus acides, bah, tous les petits animaux qui ont un squelette en calcaire, ils vont être dissous comme cette craie. So, end of a busy week in Monaco. A few more meetings here, but uh, this was uh, the pinnacle event. Um, 150 kids here in the museum. Uh, the famous uh, Oceanographic Museum of Monaco and also some kids online, some classes online that followed also behind their screens and um, yeah, it's always fantastic to see all the, the curiosity, the questions and, uh, and the interest of, um, of the youngsters and giving them some idea and hopefully motivating them to be curious about adventures, our planet, nature, climate change, becoming a scientist scientist maybe or because we had a scientist with us on stage Lea and also um, maybe some of them uh, would like to know more about sailing and follow them on the globe so um, this uh, this was uh, a fantastic event here in the museum and uh, and then uh, it's on to to Lorient next week where we on Monday we launch uh, we launch the boat and then uh, into this big season. Thank you.